Hi everyone, this is Marty with Pezzadoodle Designs and I'm here with another video sponsored by favecrafts.com and today we're going to paint an image using distress embossing powders. Now obviously we're not going to actually turn them into paint but we're going to use them to color the different parts of our image. So I have a variety of powders here that coordinate with what I'm doing with my image. You want to shake these up Distress embossing powders are different than regular powders and they have these release crystals in them so you want to get that good mixed up. I have this beautiful collage stamp from iBreak for Stamps and some Versamark. And you want to ink up your stamp really well. And because mine is unmounted and I want to make sure I get a really good image, I'm going to put my paper on a little piece of very thin foam just to give it a little bit of give. The Versamark ink, if you have not worked with it before, it's a sticky, very slow drying ink and it's used for embossing. Make sure I get all the parts of my stamp since it's a fairly large stamp. Now it can be very hard to see your image, so just make sure you have good light and tilt it if you need to so that you can see it. And we're going to start with our embossing powders, and you want to just take a little pinch between your thumb and finger, and then wiggle very, very slightly to let a little bit of powder fall. And this way you can really control where that embossing powder is going. And you'll continue this process until you have your whole image covered in powders. Okay, now you can see sort of the vague shape of all of the different images in this collage. There's the flower in the center, there's some writing in the background, and then there's a nice frame. Here's the little stem. Now to make sure you have good coverage, you're simply going to lift your piece and tap very lightly underneath. This sort of bounces the powders around in place so that they cover well where they're supposed to and then you want to dump it off but don't be rough with it you want to knock off the excess powder but you don't want to knock off the powders you want to keep and now you're ready to heat now distress embossing powder works a little bit differently than regular embossing powder you want to make sure you're working under a really good light with any embossing powders so that you can see the changes that take place because that's what you're watching for. And in this particular instance, what you're going to see is the powders won't so much melt and turn glossy, but they will have a slight movement when they melt. And that's what you're going to watch for. Keep in mind also that when these are still warm, even if you've melted them all the way, when they're still warm, if you brush your finger across them, you will brush them off. They have to cool first. So we're just going to heat with our heat gun and watch for those changes. After you finish heating, like I said, make sure your image is completely cool before you touch it 
And then I usually just kind of test a few spots, make sure I got everything. And I test very carefully because if there's some movement and I need to reheat, I don't want to wipe it all off. And now if you brush your finger over these powders, you will get some crystals that release. We are going to ink the edges. But how gorgeous is that? Look at those colors. And it's so delicate. The colors of the distress line are so amazing. They're just perfect for this style of stamp. And I think that they are just really, really beautiful. So trim around your edges and you can use the coordinating distress inks to add some ink to the backgrounds with a sponge applicator or foam. Okay, you can see I've trimmed it down just a little. Move my powders out of the way. The colors I used on this image are mustard seed and then a little worn lipstick, some tattered rose, some more mustard seed, this is peeled paint, and this is shabby shutters. So I'm going to go around the edges, the outside edges, with some more of the tattered rose in the Distress Ink. This is a little foam tool, ink blending tool. And I'm working on a non-stick craft sheet, very important so that your tool can slide around. And I'm just going to add some color to the edges behind that green. And this is totally optional. You may like it white, you may like it with some color. But I wanted to show you how I do this. Just real quick, right around the edges. You can obviously go all the way into your image if you really wanted to add a lot of color. And then I've got some worn lipstick that I'm going to go around the very outside edges. I just tilt my tool up a little at an angle so I just catch that edge. And there is your image ready to mount on a card or any other project you might have. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, as always, be sure and let me know and I will answer them for you. And be sure and check out favecrafts.com on the internet as well as their channel on YouTube for loads more tips, videos, and tutorials just like this one. Thanks so much.